Liverpool spent an upfront fee of around £67 million to bring in a 23-year-old Uruguayan striker named Darwin Nunes to be their main man up top. However, he does not fit the normal mold of a Klopp's number 9 since he started managing Liverpool. So in this video, I will explain how Liverpool will utilize Darwin Nunes this season. Liverpool's tactics are very well known, but I will quickly go over them to explain how Liverpool will play this season if Nunes is not on the pitch. Liverpool's main creation comes from their 9 and their fullbacks, as in the final third they are set up in a 2-3-5 as their fullbacks push high up and wide and look to ping balls into the box, and the 9 plays as a false 9 looking to receive possession in front of the opposition's defense and play balls into his two inside forwards making runs towards the box. The central midfielders in the system are mostly needed to be workhorses to win back possession when the attack loses it and help recycle possession when needed. With Jota or Bobby Firmino in the 9, this system can stay in place as they are both technically gifted enough to be that false 9, however Firmino is much better in this role than Jota. However, Jota is the much better finisher. Regardless, they are both number 9s that are comfortable with playing with their back towards the goal. However, Nunez is definitely not. With Darwin Nunez in the lineup, however, the squad will look and also act differently in my opinion, and this has been shown in the preseason matches so far. It has been widely publicized that Nunez lacks some technical ability and that hinders Klopp's normal system, as he normally has a false nine with great technical ability. It's clear that he wants to tweak his tactics and bring in a goal-scoring nine that he really has never had. Klopp is going to play to Nunez's strengths, which is his quickness, dribbling ability, size, and finishing. Of course, on paper and in the defensive phase, they will look like a condensed 4-3-3, as this is Klopp's preferred gegenpressing setup. But in the attacking and build-up phase, it will look drastically different, especially the right-sided 8. With Thiago and Fabinho, they can thrive in a double-pivot situation, as Fabinho has a defensive side down and Thiago has the possession holding and passing side down. This means that the right-sided center mid would either be Harvey Elliott or Fabio Carvalho, with Nunes on the pitch as they will drift into the central attacking areas and play almost as a 10, so the system will really look like a 4-2-3-1 in possession. They will be the technically gifted player that Liverpool try to feed to then feed Nunez running through the lines. That is also not the only way their attack will change. If Carvalho or Elliott are in that right center mid position, they can also move into the wider spaces and be very comfortable there allowing for Trent to also move into those central areas and play as a 10 at times, which we have seen loads of in the preseason when Nunez is in the match so far. Last season, if you watch Liverpool, especially in the few matches Elliott started in, he, Trent, and Salah on the right side interchanged their position loads, and this will continue. Klopp, when his team has possession, one of those three on the right side will then play centrally, and their main goal will be to play balls behind the defense in hopes of getting it to Nunez for him to put shots on target. Other than this, Nunez brings an aspect that Liverpool have only really had when Origi was in the match, which is a true aerial threat from open play. Liverpool have always struggled against low block opposition to score, but in their normal 2-3-5 attacking structure, Trent can focus on pinging crosses into the box for Nunez hoping for him to finish those chances. Finally, the last attacking option he brings is being a counter-attacking threat. When Liverpool win possession deep in their own half, they typically counter very quickly and effectively, and Nunez's quickness and spatial awareness will come into effect here, and he will be incredible on the counter. He could make runs that Trent and Co. can play with through balls to, or he could receive possession on the counter and attack the defense with his excellent dribbling ability. Regardless, his influence on counterattacking will be sensational. Nunez brings a different style of attacking threat that Klopp really has never had at this club, which is a direct attacking number 9. Liverpool's 9 has always been their main creator, alongside the fullbacks. Now Klopp will look to his two youngsters in Carvalho and Elliott to be the creators and have a true finisher in Darwin Nunez. The main question is, will he succeed? In my opinion, he was an incredibly risky move that cost a lot of money that could be a Fernando Torres type player or just a quicker Andy Carroll. It is glaringly obvious he will not be a 9 that plays similar to that of Firmino or Mane as that would not work. But if Liverpool are able to play to his strengths, I really see him having a double digit scoring season next year. Of course, in all competitions. He will obviously need to be a 20 plus goal a season striker to justify his price tag. And it is possible for him to be that, but I do not think he will reach that tally this coming season. I predict that in all competitions next season, he will score 11 goals. And most of them will come from the second half of the campaign, as I believe he will start off extremely slow making Klopp start some of those early matches with Jota or Firmino in the 9. But after the World Cup, which I think he will do well at, 
he will come back to Liverpool with a chip on his shoulder. And then he will finish the season with 11 goals, which will be an average season. And from there, start putting up incredible numbers. But of course, if he was to become a flop transfer, it really would not surprise me. He is a high-risk, high-reward transfer that if utilized correctly, could be incredible.